How is your investigation going, Dr. Reed? Time is our enemy. I have a few questions for your lordship. All right, but be quick. You made me swear on the blood of William Marshall during my initiation ceremony. Why was that? William Marshall was the most glorious knight who ever lived. He served five kings and was a living example of probity for all. And he was my maker. William Marshall was a vampire. Is this some sort of joke? Wait. Could he be my maker? That would be joyful news. For it would mean he still walks among us. But alas, the great knight has left this world for good. Why is his blood so sacred to the Ascalon Club? He was simply the greatest defender of the realm we have ever known. I fought by his side at the Battle of Preston, and he made me his progeny following the fight. May I ask you about the mortal who attended my initiation, Mr. Aloysius Dawson? A member of the club does not normally ask questions about other members. We trust each other mutually. So he really is a member, then? Indeed. Only the most eminent members are allowed to attend such ceremonies. Even if I admit some of us fled during the first hours of the Great Hunt. But Mr. Dawson is mortal. Are you not afraid he might reveal who you are? Especially to your enemies? Aloysius Dawson is a man of his word, as are all of us. This is the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. We do not grant access to the unworthy. What can you tell me about the Great Hunt? It's a major concern, and I'm convinced we'll only get a satisfactory conclusion by putting an end to the epidemic. I have already met Geoffrey McCullum. I am certain he will persist until he has killed every last vampire. The Guard's current successful recruitment campaign is driven by the ravenous behavior of the Skulls. I see. So without the epidemic creating Skulls, the Guard could not convince anybody of our presence. Exactly. Once we have put the epidemic behind us, we need only wait until the Guard grows old and weak. Time will once again become our ally. What about the risk of a full-scale attack here? Geoffrey McCullum is a daring leader. That is exactly why so many of our number have left the country until things improve. But not me. I founded this club. I'll die defending it. Goodbye, Lord Redgrave. Godspeed, Dr. Reed. We are counting on you. Good evening, Dr. Reed. How does it feel to be this evening's centerpiece? Figuratively. It's quite unsettling. As a doctor, I am more used to being the observer than the subject observed. Do not be alarmed. The Ascalon Club has a tried and tested policy for choosing its initiates. May I ask who you are, sir? Why would you be interested? Well, as you seem to be the only man in the room with a beating heart, you draw quite a bit of attention yourself. Ah, vampire senses never cease to fascinate me. They dwarf those of mere mortals. I am Aloysius Dawson, by the way. Mr. Dawson? Of Dawson and Dawson? The wealthiest man in England? It is a pleasure to meet such a prominent figure of London. A withering London figurehead, to be precise. Are you sick, Mr. Dawson? I am a doctor, you know. My case is beyond the scope of traditional medicine. I have spent fortunes on the world's most competent doctors to arrive at that diagnostic conclusion. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Should I suppose that you're here in search of some form of immortality? Absolutely not. 
I'm here to implement my plan to save the city I was born in. To cast out the ghastly evil that has us all on our knees. Money cannot solve every problem. This mysterious epidemic is going to require more than money can buy. You're right. Money is nothing unless one has the will to wield it. I have a plan, sir. A radical one that will save all that is essential in London. What is your plan, then? Quarantine and barricades are futile. What we need is a wall. A formidable, unscalable wall to isolate the deserving from the infected masses. By doing so, you would create two separate ghettos. What if the disease gets past the wall? The results would be disastrous. Not if we eliminate all suspected cases of infection as soon as they appear. A necessary sacrifice. Are you not mistaking sacrifice for summary execution? Why do you care? Are you not a vampire? Removed from all mortal concerns? Decisiveness is what the city needs, and it needs it now. Hello again, Mother. Jonathan, back already? Good, good. I was just about to go outside to find you. You shouldn't stay away for so long. Tell me, Mother, how are you? All alone in this big house with only Avery to take care of you. I'm sad most of the time. Sad that you have left me here alone. Sad that you don't tell me when you come or go. I'm so sorry, Mother. I wasn't supposed to be like this. I was coming home. I was home. London, the Thames, and then it happened. What happened, Johnny? I was attacked, Mother. And I've not been the same since. The important thing is that you finally returned home. I was worried, you know. You were the last member of the family of whom I had no news. Even Mary comes more often than you. Goodbye, Mother. Try to rest now. Goodbye, son. Please come back soon. Jonathan, my dear, bring me my glasses. I feel like reading. I remember Sunday walks in the park. Whether you need to buy something or not, I am happy to help. Good evening, sir. Please forgive me for disturbing you. I'm a doctor. I never judge a man by his title, but by his attitude. And you are not disturbing me at all. 
I am Calhoun Russell, and I welcome you. Well, I must admit, it's good to receive a warm welcome for once. I'm Dr. I'm Jonathan Reed. Welcome, Dr. Reed. Welcome to my humble shop. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual? Well, not really. Wait, now that you mention it, I don't see the McPhersons in my favorite restaurants. They love delicate meals too, you understand? Thank you. It may be nothing, but I'll investigate anyway. Where do they live? They have a house in the southern part of the district, somewhere north of the railway bridge. There is a courtyard, if I remember rightly. Do you have any family nearby? Not since my parents died. I'm London's lone gourmet. London's lone gourmet? What a strange title. I used that name in my early years when I was a food critic, and I came. Really? But you seem to be such a pleasant and sociable fellow. I'm afraid the real hedonist has to be sometimes. I discovered ecstasy as a solitary pleasure, but it does not mean it can't ever be shared. How is the situation in this part of town? Life is good and peaceful. We're lucky to live in such an era of progress and wonders. Are you not concerned about the epidemic? Oh, I'm sure the authorities would take the appropriate measure if the danger were that high. I'm afraid the newspapers are seriously underestimating the situation. Things are critical, believe me. Well, that's news then. But I can't believe that things are that bad. Are you sure you're not exaggerating a bit? For the thrill of it? Is it not a little too late to be trading? On the contrary, it is the perfect hour. Believe me, my friend, it is always at night that you meet the most fascinating characters. But what about the epidemic? The bombs and raids? And all the random violence? Please, sir, this is London, England. We will prevail. And if a bomb must fall on my shop, then I'll be there to hear it falling. So you prefer to work at night? Oh, I also enjoy a sunny day like everybody else. But the night always has a certain je ne sais quoi of its own. What can you tell me about this place? I recently found the best steak and kidney pie in the city. I'd be glad to share the address if you want. Finding a good restaurant? Is that really all that interests you? Oh, I have many passions, but nothing brings me ecstasy like subtle and exquisite flavors from my teeth to my belly. I must confess, I have quite specific tastes when it comes to nutrition. Really? Well, I'm always happy to try new exotic meals. If you ever find an intriguing table, please share the address. Goodbye, Mr. Russell. I'm sure you'll take care of yourself. Women of all countries unite! Support the equality between men and women! It's locked.
Good evening, Benjamin. Can I help you? I'm afraid not, Mr. Reed. A gun, alcohol, and a bad temper make a terrible cocktail, sir. Goodbye for now.
locked, all right. You again? What do you want this time? How is the sanitary situation in Whitechapel? I'm not easily scared, but crazy killers and armed patrols are lurking about. My son's right about this place. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your focus. How are the current conditions in Whitechapel? When well, there's more people outside at night than during the day, then you've got to start to worry. Goodbye for now, Mr. Lewis. Turn up. Yeah. 
So the husband had an affair with Doris Fletcher. Doris Fletcher seems to be the missing link here. It can't just be a coincidence. I should go to her acting school. I'm doing this. I have this thirst for blood. This is despicable.
Thank <laughs> you. 